everybody. Somebody give me a fire for five, and we will get moving. We'll get moving. Happy Easter, everybody. I'm going to say that first and foremost. Um, unless something big happens, I probably won't stream again until Monday after this one. Um, got family coming over tomorrow and Easter and all that. So, um, but check in, though, because I still might. If there's something going on, if I get more data on what we're getting ready to talk about here, I definitely will come on for a little while tomorrow. Um, but, so I just want to, because there is quite a bit of stuff here, guys. Um, I'm telling you, uh, this is, uh, actually, I really wasn't expecting any of this. Um, this flare came from that same sunspot again. Um, but it is in the Earth, what we call the Earth's danger zone. And I really don't like putting that word danger there. Um, I did because that's what they call it. So, um, but it definitely is in a, what we would consider, I guess, a dangerous spot to be erupting out in because we can get uh, significant uh, radiation storms when it erupts in this spot. And what you're seeing here, guys, this is Soho. This is that, it's from our perspective, right? Here, I'll just show it to you real quick. And um, so, yeah. So you got the earth right there, Soho here, right? And uh, before we get moving, though, guys, please share this out. This is a really weird time, even for me to be streaming. I, I typically don't, even if I go, like, in the middle of the night, it's, like, 3 o'clock usually or 4. Um, this is really just a, I don't usually stream at this time hardly ever. Uh, so I don't like to, cause it kind of hits in between things. Also, sometimes Marfugal is still on right now. So they, they don't stream on the weekends unless they need to. But, um, so I try to kind of stay away from that too, just out of respect for Adam and Dex. Um, they've helped, helped this channel out so much and. So many of you good people have come from there. Hey, Kiss Freak, good to see you, brother. One of my favorite Canucks right there, people. Y'all don't know who Kiss Freak is? You need to know. He's a good dude. Good dude. Such a good dude. He did some really cool stuff. Um, shared a lot of stuff with us over on the lifeboat. Man, and some stuff I'd never heard of anybody doing. And it was it was awesome. So please go over to the lifeboat and check that stuff out. Um, he's got a lot of, he's actually been on there quite a bit with Tommy. I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I guess quite a bit might be a little much for like, like quite a bit. But he's been on a couple of times with Tommy also. Um, but just really good stuff. It really is good, insightful, good, just good stuff. Go check it out, guys, over on the lifeboat. Okay, so no more shout outs until I get done with space weather. I am uh, going to be doing a space weather at the front, okay, from now on. That's a rule for me. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to stick to it, uh, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm sorry if that offends other people that want me to do this and that and the other. I do find it annoying when I go to other channels, and they take 20 minutes to get into what they're talking about. And I've caught myself doing that, So, and I've been critiqued multiple times on this and i need reminded so if i'm ever doing that please tell me i'm not going to get offended i promise so let me get through the space weather what we're here for and then we can talk after that you guys want to hang out for a minute um but anyway so back to the space weather <laughs> here's the earth here's the satellite we're going to be looking from it sits out in front of earth about a million miles closer to the sun. It's from our perspective. Really, that's all you need to know for a basic understanding of what we're talking about. Um, on the left, these are coronagraph images from LASCO C2, which is on the satellite. It's an observatory satellite. That's what this is. It's got a lot of data collectors on it, a lot of imagers, that kind of a thing. But as you can see, the sun's erupting all over the place. Okay. Now, some of these are smaller. Some of these could be bigger. Some of these look to be deceivingly heading at Earth, okay? And I'm going to show you one that I've seen on the 304 Angstrom on SDO. It's a filament that erupted out that I do think 
he has a chance of hitting us and and not a lot of people are going to see it because it's the sun kind of camouflages it so we'll get to that in just a minute but as far as the x flare um it was not a complete um uh let's see here how can i point it it was a 9.4 M class flare. You don't get much more closer to an M, uh, an X flare than that without calling it an X flare. For all essential uh, purposes here, it's an X flare. Look, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm calling it an X flare because that's. I mean, we really did see those kinds of conditions. We got into radio blackouts. So I'm not sure if we got quite to R3, but we did get into high R2 levels. Um, and so that's what you're seeing here. Also, this was a longer duration one. This would not, this was not like a, like impulsive. So why I put the, you know, this was in, the, if this was an impulsive flare, I probably wouldn't even have put, hey, we had a flare in the danger zone, right? But because of the duration of it, I did. And the reason why, and right now, this is kind of a good sign that, because we're looking for this. To start to rise the proton flux typically if you had a flare here right we would start seeing these proton fluxes by now the protons so we're not seeing that we're not seeing any movement at all in the protons so um right now as it sits i don't know if we're going to get a radiation storm from this um it, it was very very possible when i first seen this so let me show you the flare. It, you guys seen it on the thumbnail, but let's just look at it here in the movie format. And, you know, I'll kind of do it slow here. So there you got that. Now, why do I call this the danger zone? I've explained this quite a bit lately because we had quite a few radiation storms as of late. Okay, our connection to the sun. We're magnetically connected to the sun. And I guess the best way to do this would probably be to show you this. Right here. This is the NASA CME tracker. I'm not using it for that purpose, though. I'm using this to show you our uh, inter interplanetary magnetic field line, which is our connection magnetically to the sun. Everything in our solar system is connected to the sun, even the satellites. But because of the Parker spiral, and I'm not going to go into what that is right now, just think of it as a movement, spiral movement type of thing, okay? See how Earth is here, this yellow ball, the sun's here, it's a straight line, right? Well, our connection line curves in, right? So when we're connected, typically, and it moves, okay? It doesn't stay static in one spot. So this thing kind of bounces around and everything, but... In general, it's on this side of the sun, not right in the front. So when we have something firing off that way, and that, that actually could be that eruption. Let's look at the date here. Hold on. That was, nope. Nope. This one was on the 28th or 29th. Um, but when, when we get them erupting off here, on, in this direction, they have a chance of crossing over our magnetic field line, our connection to the sun. So when they do, the pro if there's any like high levels of protons with that, those protons will grab this, and it'll get magnetically drawn back to us. We've had backside, large backside eruptions that went straight off the back of the sun. Was not going to hit us at all, but because of this Parker spiral and the intense eruption that would cause something like that all the way to you know kind of going it was more so going like this direction not directly off the back but it was kind of going like this direction but it was so large and intense part of it as it spiraled out caught that magnetic connection line and hit earth with a radiation storm from a backside eruption so that's why we call this this the danger zone Okay, so let's go back here. The danger zone would be probably anywhere my cursor here, this way. Okay, so anything that fires off is really going to be going 
generally that direction, right? So it's going to cross over that line. Um, and that's, you know, also north-south comes into play here also. I mean, it's got to really be, it's got to be in the right position. Um, so it doesn't have a whole lot of time to fan out before it crosses that line, which is kind of good because if it did, it would have more of a chance of, you know, hitting that line. So when these things flare and erupt over on this side, we are definitely in a position that we could get a radiation storm from it. But typically those will arrive in one to two hours and it hasn't arrived yet. I was waiting for it and waiting for it and it's never did. So, you know, and, it, and that happens. It happens often, actually. It's kind of like a coin flip, whether or not it's going to happen or not. So, you know, you get this, X, I'm calling it an X flare for what, I, I'm just going to call it an X flare. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and keep saying almost X flare. But yeah, so you can kind of see that and it's long duration. See how it hangs on. Now, we've had eruptions over here. I did a short yesterday showing you one down here. We've had an eruption up here. So let me show you, before we sh I show you those other eruptions, I'm going to show you the coronal hole. Okay, that's a hole in the corona, which is the atmosphere of the sun. When that happens, it exposes the surface of the sun, and highly charged particles, plasma, flows out. Again, comes here basically magnetically, and it comes in on our poles because of magnetics, positive and negative. So it gets drawn in on our poles through us, what we call a coronal hole stream, right? And it's not wind. It's just high-charged particles traveling on those connection lines. It's not a low to high-pressure wind like inside our atmosphere on Earth, okay? So it ain't going to blow your hair back. Matter of fact, a lot of these particles can pass right through you and like cosmic waves, and they, it's like getting an x-ray. So, um... You know, that, when we're talking about cosmic rays, that's what we're talking about. But a lot of these particles, if they make it down to the surface, they, you know, they just keep on moving, right? Um, and that's why we are concerned with the radiation part of it when that, when that has to be considered, okay? So if we look at the 304 here, this is ionized helium, okay? Now, this is just a filter. We can't see the 304 part of the light spectrum. We see very little of the light spectrum, and I know I say that a lot, but it's easy to say, and, and not everybody knows that. Our eyes see such a small small part of the light spectrum. So we use these filters, and what it does is it looks at just one specific angstrom, wavelength of light here, the 304, right? So ionized helium shows up, in that angstrom if we were if we were standing here and there was ionized helium right in front of you in your room with you you could not see it <laughs> okay so that's why they do this so we were able to see these gases now i, I guess maybe that might not be a hundred percent correct but you wouldn't see this right um and you might not be able to see it at all i don't know but that's what shows up in this angstrom of light. So when we see these gases, we're able to look at the sun in a different visual. And it allows us to see these magnetic filaments on the 304 here laying across the surface or in the corona. And they lift off and erupt. When they do, it shoots plasma out. Here is that flare I was just showing you. Okay. But we had one eruptions down here. Um, hold on one minute here. So what I'll do here is I'll just run this back and I want to get to the, the filament I seen that was almost vertical. Okay, there it is. Now I know you didn't see it. I'm going to zoom into it because it's, it's hard to see. And, you know, you may not even, depending on what kind of device you're looking on right now, you might not even be able to see it when I show it to you. Because it is that hard to see. It's this little dark shadow right in here. I'm running it back so we can get the full view here. Now you see these other dark shadows, right? That, that one didn't erupt. But 
those all have a chance if they get destabilized, they can blow off at any time. So watch where my cursor's at. You're going to see this one start to move. I know it look, it's taking a minute. You see it right there? It's moving right here. Let me back it up so you can see it again. See that? How it's starting to lift off? And then it snaps right there. Wham. You can kind of see almost a shadow cloud. Thank you, 5G. Appreciate that. Thank you for the gifted memberships. Hey, guys, I have to. I will stop right here and say this. I am so humbled and grateful that you guys are becoming members. It is such a, it, it just blows my mind. Um, we got over 200 members already in less than two weeks. And a lot of it's from the gifting memberships. So just so you guys know, if you have a membership, it will probably prompt you and ask you if you want to re-up it next month. And there is no obligation to do any of that, okay? But I just want to make sure that you guys know that if you want to continue to be a member. Um, and again, you know, like I said, I, I actually priced mine a little bit lower than what most have theirs priced. And I did that for a reason. I mean, I, I, I feel like I want everybody involved in that as much as I can. And, you know, that's just how I was trying to do that. I don't have any level above $20, and I don't intend to unless somebody wants to ask for that. Um, so... We do have one uh, one twenty dollar member. Enigma is the the account. Um, it's awesome. And uh, again, we're gonna I'm I'm starting uh, members only streams next week. This coming week, I'll do a couple of those, and we're gonna kind of just decide on some emojis and things like that. We're gonna talk about the eclipse too, because I am gonna be trying to do something with that. But we'll talk about that later. But I just wanted to bring point that out. And just show you guys my appreciation for all that. That is just, uh, I didn't expect it. It really has blown my mind. So thank you guys so much. Um, Beat Quake and anybody who's just taken out of their own. Yeah. Okay. So we got this eruption right here, but we also have another bigger eruption right here happening. Wham. Right? So that one erupts there. Now, we're, I don't know if we're going to get a whole lot of that at Earth, but you see this. Okay, this filament is lifting off. And it does lift off, it looks like. Now, how much of it? I don't know. But what I can tell you and show you is this. Thanks again. Appreciate that. Man. Wow. Wow, 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 guys. That's all I can say. Each and every time. And I'm sorry if you guys get upset when I stop when somebody gifts memberships or puts a super chat in there. I'm going to do that every time. That deserves a thank you. Okay? So thank you. And it's appreciated. So much. But anyway, so watch it here on the 211. And before I move on, I know I'm stopping here again. I'm trying not to do that. But I want people to understand that I appreciate it. I really truly do. And I'm sorry if you get offended by that, but... I don't, I would be offended if I, when I give memberships, if it's not, hey, thanks, at least a thanks, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's just common courtesy. For me, it's a little more because I, yeah. Okay, so watch right here, guys. You're going to see the atmosphere here on the sun because we can see it pretty good. You're going to see it kind of peel back. You're going to see it move. You're going to see that shock wave go across the surface. Okay, so I'm going to back it up. Now, I want to point out that we've got all these eruptions happening. We also got this coronal hole, like I said. We're going to connect to that, and we're going to have all this stuff coming at us. Now, am I going to sit here and tell you we're going to get some big geomagnetic storm out of this? Absolutely not. I'm going to now cast it for you. So what that does is I can say, hey, I think we're going to get a geomagnetic storm. Now, when we got that big one last week, I was telling you guys G3 to G4 because I was that confident. That's exactly what we got. <laughs> um, because it was pretty easy. When things are that cut and dry, you know what I mean? But this isn't so cut and dry. So I'm going to now cast this because I'm not sure exactly how much this is going to hit us. 
I do think we'll take at least a glancing blow. So check this out. You'll see it right about, see that right there? Okay. Hey, Nikki, thank you. Thank you for the membership. I really appreciate it. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Um, but anyway, as you can see that, you see that peeling back? I mean, you see that just, and that is, that's that eruption that happened here. And then you had the filament eruption here at the same time. And it, it is oftentimes happens around these corona holes, okay? A lot of times the sunspots will sit in the front or even in behind these corona holes. And they'll just, they'll be very active. These corona holes actually will play a part in steering these CMEs because you got magnetics involved. So if it's got positive against positive, it'll push it away. If it's got positive against negative particles, it'll pull it in. Lost your wrench. Hold on a minute, George. How'd you lose your wrench, George? You got one now, buddy. I don't know how that happened, bud. Don't know. Unless you unless you change your name or something. Sometimes it happens when you do that. Even if you add like a space or something. But I, I give you your wrench back, bud. I didn't know you were missing it. <laughs> Sorry. But you got it now, man. All right. So. Here we go. Right there. See that? I mean, I hope you guys can see that. So with that being in the position that it's in, I cannot definitely say it's going to hit us, okay? Uh, but what I will say is I do think that, you know, I'm going to keep a, a close eye on this one. Now, as far as, again, this X-Flare, any, anything we've gotten from this X-Flare over here, and again, I'm calling it an X-Flare, it's really an M-Flare, high M-Flare. Um, it's in the danger zone, but I don't think we're going to get a radiation storm from it. It'll be very, very delayed if that's if that's the case so what what do we do here we're, we're going to go down here and we're going to look at the d absorption region the d region absorption prediction down here notice how you're not seeing a whole lot of anything right so that's the flare right there okay but guess what look what happens everything died off now i find it I think we're having some missing data here, which has got me a little wondering if something might have hit a satellite or something. But we'll we'll just play it by ear here. See how it goes with that, and then boom, it's gone off. There is nothing there at all. Typically that will fade out a little slower, but not always. Okay. Um so at 433 we got that, and then at 434 it's gone. So I don't know. A lot of times when it hits the satellite, it'll just be missing the time. That time won't even show up. So it could be a true reading. I don't know. But if we were going to get a proton storm, a radiation storm, the pole areas would be lit up. Okay? And they're not. Not even a little bit. Okay? So if I take you over to the Discover data here, we actually took a hit over here. And I don't know where it came from. It could have been um, the fine angle flipping, but it wasn't. The fine angle didn't flip. I guess it could have been the current sheet. I'm not going to go into exactly what that is, but every once in a while, the sun's current sheet will uh, spiral through and hit. A crossover our magnetic connections will get hit with it, and sometimes it can cause geomagnetic storms. Well, looking at this, you see how everything moved? Density. Um speed rows the temperature rows we even even over here we went down to six on the negative six on the bz for a second and that was just prior to but what caught my attention was this we got almost what's that let's see here 491 let's see here what the that thing lock up on me looks like it might have okay well let's just redo that how about that 
So if I go like this, check it out. I think it got close to 700 on the speed there for a minute. There's 630, right? Thanks, YG. Appreciate it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. But we almost got to... Everybody who ever got those uh, those memberships, tell tell 5G thanks. I mean, that that's that's awesome. Thank you. But anyway, you got 676 here. That is... Uh, hey, Miss V, good to see you. Now you got... Um, almost 700 kilometers per second. You could think of 400 kilometers per second, 1 million miles per hour as a rule of thumb. Um, it's not going to be exact, but it's close. Okay. But that the speed rose really drastically there. And it looked like the density did too. Um, so I went over here. And whenever I see that, I'll, I'll come over here and I'll look up here. You see these downward spikes? That's a data dropout, which means the satellite's in a position it can't collect or send the data that it's got back, right? So if that was to line up with this, that could be the reason for it, but it's not, okay? Because this just happened. See how you got the data dropouts here? And they're typically going to be about 24 hours apart. And they'll actually go away for a period of time. And then they come back, go away. It's all about the orbiting of the satellites, okay? And I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch there. Hey, miss, what's up? Okay, so... I don't know what this was. I'm, I'm just going to kind of, at this point, I want to say it's the current sheet that kind of hit and moved on, right? But what I do want to show you is this, because when that stuff hit, hey, Kiss Freak, thank you. Thank you for coming to member, bud. Appreciate you, bud. Guys, if you, you guys remember that Aurora, photog that Aurora photograph I showed you guys with the excavator in the background? That's who sent me that picture. It was one of the most unique pictures I have ever seen of Aurora awesome aurora above head he was working so it was at night he was working in canada thanks man thanks appreciate you bud man you guys are killers killers in there love it thank you um tell kiss for thanks <laughs> anyway um he had an excavator sitting there and he was working that night using the excavator so he got out and he sent me some of those photographs they were some of the most unique aurora photography I had ever seen. Hey, Hoppelson, good to see you. So, um, yeah, I wanted to point that out because, it, you know, we always talk about Aurora with any of this stuff. Um, it's on my bucket list. I've never seen Aurora with my own two eyes. That's right, 5G. Thank you, though, for being as generous as you are. I'm telling you, you're awesome. Everybody in here is awesome. You don't have, you know, Please don't feel obligated, okay? I don't want anybody to ever feel like that. But I also want to give appreciation to the ones that do do stuff, okay? It's just, you know, I just think it's the right thing to do. So, anyway. So, that aurora happens sometimes when we get to negative six and we get geomagnetic storms. Um, but I want to point something out here. Actually, I was trying to show you that. Um, I want to turn that off. Um, I was trying to show you that magneto pause because it's interesting right now because it shows the hit. Let me, uh, where's it at? Give me one second here, guys. There it is. So you're going to be able to see this, this small little hit. Okay. Hey, Renee. And I don't want to call it small because it's really not small. Because looking at it, it's a pretty decent little smack we took there for a second. That's just the velocity. Look at that. Okay. We take this hit, we get compressed, and then we get rapid expansion. And it doesn't last for long. And it stables back out. So if that was to last... 
that would be like a CME hit. And, um, but because it was so short lived, it was either some sort of a glancing blow we didn't know was coming, or it could have been um, the current sheet or even a, a CIR, a co rotational interaction region in between. Uh, I know it's a bunch of word salad. Basically, it's just a buildup of particles in between two solar wind streams. And when it hits, it acts like a shock wave when it hits our magnetic field. That's as basic as I can explain that, okay? And I'm not going to go any deeper because there's no need to. Um, at least not for what we're doing here. So this is the density. So we'll, I'll show it to you here. This is just density. This isn't showing you speed. Even though you get a sense of the speed because of the way the model's made. But it's not showing you any kind of definite speed. Even though it's going to very much resemble this up here. This is showing you speed. Okay. Um, and it does look impressive. Now, again, it's not nothing to be worried about. Because it's just not. Hey, Full of Hope. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Really appreciate the super chat. Thank you. He is risen. Yes, he is. Indeed, baby. Guys, I know everybody knows I'm a Christian. Um, that's just what it is. That's who I am. And that's what I, <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it. So, there you go. Um, but I don't judge others that aren't. And everybody's welcome. So, that's what I'll say. Um, but, so let's go here with the magnetic pressure. So, you're seeing the same hit. Boom. Right? Boom, boom, boom. Boom. <laughs> Actually, it is Easter here where I'm at. And I think, Full Hope, aren't you uh, over in UK? So, yeah, it's been five hours for you. That's cool. Early in the morning for you over there. Okay. So, that was the hit there. Now, again, guys, I don't know if we're going to get hit again. Uh, I do think that we got some CME stuff coming, okay? Now, this is Dr. Tony Phillips at SpaceWeather.com. He is talking about the Devil's Comet here, okay? Um, yes, I know all that stuff is all happening at once. I get it, okay? I'm Space Weather. I'm just going to tell you about the Space Weather. Don't, you don't think I don't look at other stuff, too, okay? Because I do. I just, I'm here to report Space Weather. On that end now you know some of the members only streams or some of the other streams that I do I won't have a problem telling you what I believe um, it's not like that at all everybody has a right to what they believe and what in their opinion um, but so we're gonna go with this now he actually says solar radiation storm watch also I didn't even see that <laughs> okay yeah well I don't know Obviously, you know, you can't update this web page every 10 minutes, right? So, but I, I don't think that we're going to get there, guys. I really don't. We're not there. We're not rising at all. So, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I could be wrong. We've had delayed radiation storms in the past. Okay? Uh, but we all have been talking about this comet and the eclipse all at the same time. Um, we had a CME hit this comet and it bent the tail. I reported on that. It was pretty cool to see. Um, Comet Inky actually took a CME as it was coming closer to the sun. And the sun blew its tail completely off. So, remember that. <laughs> um, and, guys, these bigger comets can actually instigate, even the smaller ones can, can instigate the sun to erupt. It, we've seen it time and time again. Okay. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but to speak on the eclipse for a minute and my part in it, I told you guys that I'm going to try. The 5G in my area, because I live in the path of totality, is going to be a up. They're not bringing any boosters in, nothing. Okay? So whatever cell signals we have here is what we get. They're predicting here from, they, they told us where I live, don't leave. Don't leave your house. It's going to take you, but they said anywhere between three, I think the high end was 12 hours to drive across town. 
I live in a town of about 25,000 people, guys. So all the hotels have been booked up for over a year. Here around probably a day or so before the 8th, it's going to get real crazy around here. So I'm trying to give my best, the, the best shot I can to be able to stream it for you guys, at least during totality. And it's going to be nothing more than me putting a set of uh, eclipse glasses over my phone and pointing it up at the sky for you. Okay. Now, during totality, I can pull that off because it's safe. You can look up during totality. Um, and that's, you know, obviously that's the main attraction there. But my best chance to give you guys a really good, hey, this is what we got going on is to stay connected to my Wi-Fi. And the only way I can do that is if I stay close to my house in my own yard. And I don't have the best viewing thing going on here. Um, I got some trees around. Um, I can maneuver around that, but my modem's in a place, and my, you know, it's just not, my router is just not in a place that and I can't move it. That my, What I'm saying is I might not be able to. I'm going to try. Um, I've tested it. I went outside with my phone. I keep a signal. I even did like an unlisted live stream that only I could see. It went and it wasn't buffering. But also with the 5G being ate up, everybody around here that's at a hotel and anything else, they're connected to the Wi Fi there. I'm just, what I'm saying is, all the bandwidth around here is just going to be on such a low level. I'm just not very confident. So I don't want to promise something I can't give you. But I, what I can promise you is I'm going to try. So there you go. And if I can't get it done, I'm going to tell you right up off the bat. And there's going to be so many other channels live streaming this, guys. There's going to be channels live streaming it that's going to be able to show you the path of totality from multiple different locations. So, you know, I would love to be able to do it because I think it would be I'm going to be out there regardless. So, let us just speak on that for a minute. But to give you guys kind of a recap what's going on today, we got this coronal hole. We've had these eruptions. I do think we're going to wait for more data to come in, guys. Um, and then we're just going to have to wait and see. Okay? Um, and just see what happens. And as things happen, if things happen to today, Easter, I mean, if we get like a big blast and if we start seeing stuff hit us, I'm going to come on and give you guys an update, okay? Even if, if it's for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, right? Um, just so you guys know. But uh, members, anybody who's a member, please uh, um, turn your bell notifications on because I will be doing some members-only stuff um, shortly. I want to get to the point where I can, like, have you guys here during my my pre-stream setup just that so we can talk right as i'm setting up that way it will eliminate a lot of the shout out stuff that i do um and i'm trying not to do that anyway i'm going to eliminate that um not completely when somebody super chats or does uh gifted stuff and that kind of thing i will every time i'm going to stop and say thank you okay just know that because that's just how i feel i'm thankful for it so, but um, if you're a member, please get that bell turned on so you know when I put something up, it's members only. Okay. Thanks again, 5G. Another five. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Man, I'll tell you. Something special, guys. I, I just, you guys are just awesome. I just, yeah. Anyway, um, anybody who's having any issues, guys, prayers for you. Good thoughts. Love and life. Whatever you guys do, please send it out to everybody. You know, it's going to, let's just have a good weekend. And um, if we don't have anything going on today, if anything doesn't happen, you will see me on Monday. But check back, because I might, because notifications have not been going out like they should. Um, and that's not just me. It is a platform-wide problem right now. I'm hearing it everywhere. Um, it's happening to me. I'm not getting notifications Till like seven eight hours late so um i know it's not just 
a single thing. It, they're not picking on any channels or anything like that. It is just simply a platform problem. Um, and I, I would imagine they're working on that because guys think about it. They don't gain anything from that. Okay. They really don't. They make their, they make their money by us making them money. So they want everybody to get everywhere. Right. So anyway, we're going to just kind of move on from that. But guys, thank you guys again for the gift of memberships. Anybody who bought the memberships today, um, full hope. Thank you for the super chat. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. Hey, Leisure. Renee, good to see you. She's got an emoji named after her. It's called the question, the Renee question mark. It's a good one. Um, but look for that, guys. God bless. Yahusha saves and uh, happy Easter. And um, you could drink this Kool-Aid, but if you got a choice, drink the blue Kool-Aid because that's who I was, if you remember. I used to be my channel name. Blue Kool-Aid, oh yeah, was my channel name. But again, happy Easter. God bless. Yahusha saves. And uh, yeah, you can drink this Kool-Aid. Thank you.